Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We review anything and everything. And today we're going to get into another Jurassic World dinosaur figure review. This is from the Jurassic World Chaos Theory line, Epic Evolution subline. The why it's a wild roar type figure, or at least in terms of the action feature that it's labeled as. This is the Pecky Rhinoceros. Now, take a look at the back really quick. Some of the other ones from the line, it has that same action raw feature where you roll the kind of roller disc and it will move its head up and down and make some sounds. That's actually pretty nice. The motion and the whole, it looks like that's how it would be making its roaring sound. And so like. I actually like that and it's a nice good sound. The detail of the figure looks nice. Um, let me bring this up real quick before I forget because I always tend to forget this. Scan QR code. The detail in the figure looks nice. The head looks nice. The crest, the little horn that it has here, everything on it. Its size is okay. I'm going to bring in Owen really quick just for a sense of scale. And of course he falls. So, Owen representing a six foot man. Um, the scale looks pretty decent, especially when you consider that in the show, if I'm not mistaken, in the early versions of the show, the um, Camp Cretaceous, which this is a sub uh, or a continuation of the Camp Cretaceous show. I remember, if I'm not mistaken, Pecky Rhinoceros was the one who was running in the grassy fields when they had a stampede and they were driving side by side with it with a Jeep. Now, this figure easily would match the size of like a Jeep, uh, one of the Jurassic Park Jeeps to some degree. He's not necessarily bigger than it, but not necessarily that much smaller than it, almost comparable in size. So I think that size is fitting. Then you consider that uh, if he was standing next to one of the size of the little kids, uh, and how they looked compared to him, which would be maybe about to Owen's chest, it definitely would fit in that scale. Now, this one looks to be, in my mind, a little bit bigger than the old Triceratops um, body design in terms of its height. It looks to be a little different, a little bit chunkier, a little bigger, not by a whole lot. But in my eyes, it looks a little bit bigger. I'm not 100% sure. But... It's definitely smaller than the newer Triceratops, and that's fine because everyone knows Triceratops is the biggest of the uh, Ceratopsian dinosaurs. Now, the thing about it is Pachyrhinoceros, this goes for $19 on Amazon. Uh, link's going to be in the description below. His measurements go for, I looked it up as 25 feet long and four tons. Now, this is obviously not going to be anywhere close to that sense. So if you want to say that this is more of a, like a teenager or, or a mid-size, you know, juvenile or something of that sort, that's fine. Uh, I don't think every dinosaur needs to be represented in its biggest form. Um, I don't think that has to be the case. Though a lot of times we feel that way with the ones that we know best, like Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Those ones, we want them to be at their biggest scale because they're the most famous. I don't think there's anything wrong with this one not being the largest size that it could be. I'm really a fan of the paint job and the details of the face. The eyes look really nice, um, even though it's just a dab of paint, but I just feel like it came out really nice. Um, you know, the whole head sculpt looks nice. I just think it looks nice. And I think it looks even better. You can see the evolution of the detail in it, the little fat belly, that little uh, triangle shape going on right there from that side, that side, and curving at the bottom. It definitely has that dynamic. I definitely feel the detail is better than some of the old Ceratopsian dinosaurs way back. Um, for the main line, I'm not including Hammer Collection or anything like that, but for the main line, you got a little bit of detail. Um, you know, striped speckling or whatever you want to call it at the top. You know, yes, it doesn't continue all the way to the back. That's kind of common with, you know, the uh, Jurassic World, Jurassic Park line. But you do have some of this on top here, which looks nice too. And I just think it looks really nice. So I'm a real big fan of the figure, especially for the price. It's not an arm and a leg. And it's, you know, for what you're getting, it's comparable to, say, the Maposaurus, Ceratosaurus, and whatnot, uh, and roughly the same bulkiness and size. So let's go into the measurements now, as I always do on my channel. 
So I would say it's roughly about 11 inches, slightly shorter, but we could just say if the tail was bent out more. So we're just going to say 11 inches. And the height on it is uh, four and three quarters. So four and three quarters. My memory is so bad. What did I say for the length? 11. Okay. So four and three quarters. He is 7.6 feet tall. And as far as his length, Seventeen point six. So obviously he's nowhere near the length that he's supposed to be at twenty five feet long. Um, and and most depictions of Pachyrhinosaurus is very close in size to Triceratops, where Triceratops would be thirty feet in length and about six tons, somewhere in that range, six tons ish. Um, Pachyrhinosaurus being four tons and twenty five feet long. He's smaller, but he's probably like a good 66% of the size of Triceratops. Now this doesn't depict that, but it's still a decent scale. If you want to say it's just, you know, a younger version or, you know, kind of a, a mid-sized adult or whatever the case is, or maybe even a female and that's fine. Um, but I do like the sculpt. I do like the action feature on it. it does well on it. The way the head gets thrown back does look like it's in that kind of roaring, you know, like it's about to get into a battle with another male or it's signaling to other females, or maybe even just like, you know, letting other ones know that there's threat coming. So I just, that little pose that they do right there looks nice, especially when you consider the fact that you have the neck is angled like that, but then the whole head, the separate joint of the head faces upwards because otherwise you could easily have it where the head is facing downwards while the neck goes up, but they make sure that the articulation goes where when the head goes up, I'm sorry, the neck goes up. The head is not just still facing forward like it is here. It actually goes upwards to really signal that roaring. And they could have been lazy and didn't do that, but they didn't. And I really think that that's good. And then when you bring his head a little lower, it's like he could be eating grass and then the midpoint. So I think it's done very well. Like I said before, links in the description down below. Like, share, comment, subscribe. And as always, you guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video.